The trenches of the Unmoored World are filled with some of the best loot you can possibly get in Dragon's Dogma 2. Today we're going to check out over 15 new items you can get in the true endgame, including 3 armor sets, all absolutely free, and some of them I haven't even seen being sold at any vendor before New Game Plus. Now, as I've said in yesterday's video, you're going to have to reach the game's true ending, which is going to open up this brand new sort of area, which is going to be the same map, but in a more apocalyptic setting. However, this is also going to open up all the riverbeds as pretty much all the water is gone. So now you have access to new boss encounters and new treasure chests that can drop some of this new loot. So starting things off with the Thief, we have this awesome looking Assassin's Armor set and starting things off with the Assassin's Breaches, you're going to find them right here on the road west from the Volcanic Camp. It's going to be in the Volcanic Island, right here where water used to be in this area. So simply head over here in this sort of open field with the barnacles and just head over in the back. There's going to be some annoying ghost enemies, but once you defeat them, you will find this chest right here submerged a little bit from these rocks. Once you open it up, you're going to get the breaches right away. The next one is going to be the Hood of Darkness and you're going to need to head over back to the Nameless Village. So it's pretty far away, pretty much far east. However, once you reach here, you're going to notice that there's a small way down from some of these houses onto the side. So simply head over from here, there should be a path leading down and you're going to immediately notice one of these chests right away in front of you. Once you open it up, this is going to give you the Hood of Darkness. It's pretty awesome actually, it's not the best in terms of magic defense, but I think this has the highest defense by default. So you can definitely use this, for example, against regular attacks. The final one is the Enshadowed Battle Garb. I believe this is the best chest before New Game Plus, and you're going to find it very close to the Medusa Encounter. So right here where the river used to be, almost close to where there's a bridge area made out of stone, you're going to reach uh, this location right here, and if you pay attention to the end, you're going to notice that there's a Chimera boss. So you will have to actually defeat this boss, which is pretty simple, and once you do it, that shroud is going to drop for you right away. It looks pretty awesome, and also make sure that you grab the fairy stone from the chest next to the boss spawn point. This is how the set looks like, by the way, I think it's really awesome and it's one of the few that actually fits that thief role sort of theme that you've been searching for. Now the next armor set is what I call the Monarch armor set, it's for the fighter and this is something that you can only get in the Unmoored world. So let's get started with the Brigadine chest piece, you're going to find it pretty much right here, sort of northwest from Harv village where that huge river passing used to be. So you just have to head over here and you're going to find this dragon enemy that you have to defeat in the area. Once you do that, this is going to most probably drop this Nightly Brigandine for you. It's actually pretty awesome, comes with 445 defense, it's not too shabby on the knockdown resist either, and it does have some debilitation resistance there as well. The next ones are the Conqueror Sabatons, and you're going to find them right here in a place called the Marshland Settlement. So once you get here, you will notice that the lake is now gone, which now revealed access to some of the catacombs behind. So there you're going to have this entrance, which you can simply follow. You can ignore the boss in the area, by the way, and simply keep it to the left side where you will encounter this new chest, giving you this awesome pair of, uh, well, I guess, Sabatons. And finally, we have the Monarch Crown, which is not too far off from the smith and his wife's house that you can find in the Volcanic Island. You just have to take this road from up north and then descend over here, and you're going to pretty much uh, find this chest beneath a structure, and once you open it up, you're going to get this really awesome looking crown. This is, by the way, the complete set and how it looks like. I think it's actually one of the more royal ones we've seen for the fighter. I think it fits really well, and it's one of the best that you're going to get for this class, at least compared to some of the stuff you can get from the Dragon Forged and of course the new game plus. Of course, we also talked about that awesome warrior set beginning with the Agamemnon Galia. This chest piece, you're going to find it in this river, former riverbed from the checkpoint rest town. So I suggest going from east to west over there and take that route. Once you reach here beneath that bridge area, you're going to notice an entrance instead of a cave. And here you're going to find that chest with, of course, the Galia inside. This I found to be the best armor set for the warrior and it's completely inaccessible from any vendor as far as I can tell. The next one is going to be the Dominator's Armor. This one has by far the biggest defense and it's pretty much as good as a fully upgraded, for example, Indomitable. 
So for this one, you're going to need to head over right here in front of Vernworth, again in the same area that was previously underwater and covered by the river. Simply head over down and you're going to notice that there's a Chimera boss over here. This is the one that actually drops that item. Now in my case, as I was playing with the thief, I actually managed to even steal it in the middle of the fight. You actually get this from one of the core skills, but even if you don't, you can loot it from its body once that fight is done, as well as the Ring of Recipients, which gives you a magic boost. The third and final piece were the Vanguarders Greaves. You get these from a chest very close to the Guerco Cavern, actually. But if you do use this cavern, you're going to need to use the path right here to the left side, pretty much make your way in the back. And then to the side with these terraces where you will see some of these enemies overlooking, of course, what was previously the river. So from this point on, you're going to want to just descend down on the side of the cliff. Eventually, this is going to let you reach the former riverbed. And now you're going to notice that in the distance, there's a dragon enemy to fight. This dragon enemy is not important. What's important is the chest behind him. So either defeat it, either just run past it, grab the chest and then immediately move over. Now you have the full on set. But it's not just this as we have a lot of other bosses that can drop some cool stuff. So in that former fog area up north right here from the checkpoint rest town after that um, ancient battleground. This used to be a place with a ton of zombies. There still are over there. But if you head over right here to the ill doers resting place there's a boss that if you defeat it's going to drop this cardinal robe for you. It's definitely one of the better looking ones for the sorcerer if you don't want to spend any money. Also, for the sorcerer, if you still happen to be at the seafloor shrine, you can actually get this armor set from over there. Well, armor actually, the encounter's coat, which you normally have to pay quite a lot of money to buy. But it's going to be right here in the seafloor shrine, sort of building on the left as you make your way inside of the castle area. So if you head over inside and simply follow the steps that I do going beneath the castle, eventually you're going to reach sort of this cellar area. And if you progress to the final cell, there's going to be a secret cavern that you can then follow a little bit further down into the ground. And at the end of one of these tunnels, you're going to find the chest, which contains this armor right here that you can get. It's going to be also pretty awesome, and at least you don't have to spend any money. The next one is going to be the Soaring Surcoat. This is going to be for the Mystic Spear Hand. You can again find it from a Dragon Boss encounter very close to the Moon's Wax Bridge. So again, just a little bit further away from that Dwarven and his wife um, house. But um, if you follow up over here beneath that bridge, you're going to find this dragon you need to fight, which is going to also drop this item for you. Keep in mind that that's going to be one of those postulant bosses, so it will actually try to poison you. If you find yourself close to the Sacred Arbor, you can also go a bit south from that to the Mountain Ruins. And on the riverbed right here, you're going to find the next item, which is this pretty awesome Predator's Maw for the Ranger. So you're going to need to head over right here on this side of the map. There's going to be a bunch of ruins and some enemies over here in which you can enter. And right by the riverbed, you're going to find the chest containing that item pretty much in plain sight. Magic Archer also has at least one item. This is going to include this chest piece called the God's Beast Scale Coat. It's actually looking pretty nice. And it's going to be at one of those locations where we just been to. So again, on the volcanic island, a little bit further east this time around. If you head over to this spot right here, you're going to notice that there's a cave entrance right beneath you. So this is going to be a slight labyrinth that you have to navigate. There are other chests in here that will give you some fairy stones. But once you reach the other side by keeping it to the left side, you're going to have to fight this um, yeah, much more stronger golem encounter. It's again going to be super easy for a thief to pull this off. And this is going to also drop that scale code for you. If you play with this class, it's actually a pretty nice way to get one without having to spend any money. Now, Trickster also has a bunch of items here. One of them is going to be right outside of Bagbatal, where that griffin used to spawn. Now there's going to be this postulant dragon that spawns instead. So it's going to be pretty dangerous to fight it on the cliff. I suggest doing it on, yeah, the road down. But if you defeat this boss, it's going to give you the Arch Conjurer's Robe. Assuming that you like playing as a Trickster, this is the item to go for. There's also another one which can go for both the Trickster, Mage, as well as the Sorcerer, and that's going to be the Stargazer's Garb, and it's going to be back at that Seafloor Shrine, Sacred Grounds. In fact, you're going to find two items over there. So one of them is going to be this chest piece, which looks um, very revealing. It's going to be right here in this sort of southern tower that you need to access via the main 
entrance of the castle. So once you are at the top of this, you're going to make your way to the second tower with this NPC. And on the left side, you're going to find the chest containing that item. Now, the only thing that we have to search for now is weapons. Of course, I'm not sure if there's any other armor sets in there that we can find, but I found at least Anathema, which is one of these sorcerer staves that we can get. It's from the boss on the way to the boss beacon for Vernworth. It's going to pretty much be in your way. You're going to have to defeat this ghost enemy, and this is the one that actually drops it. However, this has been the only weapon that I managed to get as a drop from the Unmoored world. Everything else seems to be stuck to the vendors. But if you do manage to find one or know about one yourself, definitely post it in the comments below and I'm going to feature you in the next video. Or reach out to me via Twitter. I'm going to be active over there as well. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.